So as untribe members, um, don't know what just happened there, but Tawazani again. I'm a queen in Beto Sibele. Marco Samaku, Lucy, Bizilis, and Bingelela, San Vusela, the city Hanya Bonhonu Vantatam Hulu Tobela. We have just been kicked out by the network system, so we don't know what happened. And on the first, I mean, it was already 20 minutes in the conversation. We covered a lot of grounding. Um, but I guess we can start again, you know, and maybe it's the full moon's thing because the full moon does things now sometimes. So I'm just going to wait for a few tribe members to to come in. So we are speaking about chakras. I think it's not even healing because we're not going to get so much on the healing. Uh, chakras, uh, um, I think understanding chakras. In African spirituality I think that's very important and this is a segment we started a about a month ago I know in this month early this month um, where we were exploring healing uh, sessions with um, Ikambi and we said Uguti um, because it can be natural healing. It's, it can be underscore natural underscore healing, I think. They're on Instagram and they have um, they have a, a YouTube page as well where they bring different, different practitioners who come into the space to share teachings. They had a session this Sunday. They're going to have one next month as well. So please be on the lookout for my Insta stories because I do share them. And I heard maybe they might be hosting Umkulum Kasha. I did actually send them a message and said, ask me, I can make it happen. I can be your connector too. So yeah, we were speaking before we, we got lost um, or we got cut off with Uneli Siwe Kaba about, um, about the ch chakras. And I, I would love for her to also touch on the basics again on what is chakra? How does it relate to us as Africans? Because sometimes we hear words and, 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 and things that are being said and we think they're not for us. You know, when we read about chakra healing or chakras, it always directs us to, um, to Asia, you know, it directs us to India. And we don't understand that actually Mother Africa is the mother of all forms of healing. So all forms of philosophies, teachings around healing come from the cradle of humankind, which is Africa. I spoke earlier on before we got cut off, and thank you so much, tribe members, for coming back and waiting for us to sort out the technical glitches to say Imhotep, known as the father of medicine in Kemet, um, if you understand the story and what Imhotep was able to invent and innovate, you'll understand why even yoga is an African-Asian practice. A lot of Eastern philosophy is based on African philosophy. And just because we don't have books um, that are easily accessible in libraries, it doesn't mean that what we are teaching or sharing did not really exist. There are books. It's just that they're not as accessible as other philosophies. African philosophy books, you have to really go digging to find it because it's not easily accessible. Even the book I have where I read, I started to read a couple of, I think last year on chakra healing and African spirituality, because when the tribe asked me to say, go, go, please teach about it. I, I wanted to understand it for myself first, because I feel like once I'm a teacher of experience, I teach from my own lived experiences and from my own lived experiences, I embody I embody the teachings. I embody the experiences. Therefore, when I'm teaching, there's weight into what I'm teaching. There is depth into what I'm teaching. So similarly, I am starting to understand chakras for myself. I'm starting to understand what the energy centers mean. You know, another name for chakras, uh, Nelisi, what did say? It means energy centers. And I said, when you come to Isangoma and they will say to you, Unomoya umuhle or uhamba nemimoya or imimoya or gunomoya um. So it means there's a disturbance or there's a turbulence, you know, that is happening. I was also teaching Abokoko over the weekend to say that if you are not seeing or awuzwa umoya or your intuit, you feel like your intuit intuition is muted is because also there's something wrong in your in your in, with your chakras there are things that are given to us as 
and this is how you know that our ancestors have been wise it's just that now when people also see it because they come with western with the western frame frame uh, framing uh, you know james and and Ciso, i can see you guys are, are online if it's possible james to go downstairs and have the gogos watch this with you because i think it's going to be important for them to hear about chakra healing because i feel like a healer who who their chakras are in alignment, sees better, hears better, connects better, feels better. So some of us, it is value. There's something wrong with your chakras. You are not seeing, you're not hearing it was like, because your chakras are blocked, because you're carrying resentment and anger from Muktuasa. You know, you have not made peace one with the fact that you are gifted. You went into training as a healer with resentment and you feel like from that place you are able to connect and see. I was saying to somebody else, how do you hate the, the, your, your lineage? So maybe you have an issue with daddy or you have an issue with mommy and the gift comes from them. But if you're carrying resentment towards the very same people who are gifting you the gift of healing, the first person to heal is thyself. Because you need to heal yourself before you can even be a transmuter of healing energy. So I understand very well at the point that I'm at 10 years later as a healing, you know, a practicing healer. It is in alignment with the balancing of your seven energy centers. Because one of the is that you are not allowed as an initiate to be angry for a long time not that because then the west and the psychologists were like no but you see you are not allowed to to feel no you're allowed to feel your emotions you're allowed to be angry you're allowed to be sad but you can't stay in those emotions because emotion is energy in motion so if you are not moving with the motion of the that which you're experiencing you get stuck and you clop you clock up your own chakras and by clocking them up uti no minang sabon ngangene peke nang sabon and you should be complaining about kneeling kanti kneeling is really connecting you to your root chakra and that's where all things begin kneeling is connecting you to to your ground you understand so i mean yeah now let's see where you can get up you can see where you at that now i'm connecting chakras to even the practice of ubungom because we need to understand with these rules of engagement that are created to Pechwen is to get you into alignment and balance of your seven chakras. That's when you become healed before you can heal other people. So some of us come probably with about four or five and we are not really. And then when we go out and things don't work, it's because we still have things to work through and heal through. A lot of healers are wounded by virtue of them awakening to the gift of being healers and by not healing the wounds we become wounded healers not healers of the wounded then when things don't happen because energy does not flow where energy is not going right hey. no my ancestors are bapping because there's a pay proof of payment that just came through so when the payment comes through the ancestors also say <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm getting it now. I always say to the tribe members and now we've got the number that we had. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring a uh, Uneli Siwe back while I speak to the tribe members. And I'm, I'm saying, to, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's another POP that just came through. <laughs> hey, and we're so back. Back. You, yeah, we back. I needed to get us to the number that we left off. So that's why I began by opening it. And it's it's I always say to tribe members, and you've been part of the tribe for some time. I didn't even know. But yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I was saying I say to, to, to tribe members, you know, for me when I teach, sometimes what I say to you, I'm hearing it for myself for the first time because it is not I speaking, it is we. You know, and that's why we use plural, plural we are plural in our vernac. That's why city, a city, a city abantu, you know, city tina, city zonke. So we use a lot of plural names because we understand which we are not alone. So even the things I just said right now, I just hear them for the first time. Like now I get it, which why 
a person, and if your person is rebirthing you, person who pesha, who sing, who lungi selela, who chuzale gabusha. So it means that it it takes you through the gateways of all your your chakras in order for you to come out in balance and in alignment. Then you would say I'm healed. Right, because we, we with our energy centers blocked, it becomes we do experience disease because the body is not at ease. The physical and the spiritual are not in harmony. So for me, I, I you know, um, I ask Umkulu James, who is uh, my my I want to say my former graduate. She graduated a few uh, um, a months ago, and she's now a Kobela. So she's back at Petreni to learn how to be Ukobela. So I asked Tegu to please go and watch, let the Gogos watch because they're not allowed to be on social media. But this teaching, I feel it's important because we're talking about chakras and we understand that chakras is the basis of where we all begin. Because when we were speaking earlier this week, you were even saying with people, all healers, hey, I want to open my third eye. I'm doing snuff to open my third eye. But mm -hmm. I, I will tell you, in is where Kaibos will not open your third eye. Smoke all the snuff you want. Do all the wit you want. It will not open this. Because that's why it starts from here. Because you can also win the limbelego to root you, to crown you. But by the time you go to the feminine energy, because feminine is nature. And I like what you said. You know, so I'm, I'm going to ask you to repeat everything you said. I, I've given myself to you tonight, you know. <laughs> I don't know if it's the full moon. And normally the full moon, I'm not this energetic. But I've also noticed with, with the full moon, you know, my breast, <laughs> my baby just goes like this. I guess it's, 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 it's the, it's, we are at, it's a heightened state of the feminine energy. The full yes. moon, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what we that's what I'm experiencing. Because I experience all sorts of things. It feels like I'm on my period. Like I just get things. But I'm I'm thank you so much. Thank you. It's just super excited. So let's um you know Okay, okay let's so I'll speak start, again about yeah. let's start from the basics again, like yeah. how you did it. Um tell us what is chakras. All right. So um, thank you so much. Before I, like you actually added me on, I was clapping to everything you were saying because I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I think, you know what, the way Oibeganga Kona is very important. We need to be able to take these concepts and actually make you be able to relate to them on a daily basis. Be it mm. with the Petueni, be it with M7 Zini, be it with your family. You must be able to be able to stay in check with yourself. And that's why I always, um, I, at the beginning, Okay, let me just start at the beginning. So basically, energy... And no more than in seal. No more. So I guess my name. So an energy body is like a human energy field, which extends beyond the physical. So I see you on yam. It's everything around you. That's why you will find what we say, don't go to have to dense places you'll find it no more or you are more heightened being in clubs or being around certain things you're going to be easily be able to pick up because your energy body is quite sensitive mm. so from there from the layers of your energy body you now then have an aura you know and an aura is what people pick up when you go to a psychic your aura is what people pick up your aura is also what people pick up just in the door. Like your aura is what leads before you even open up your mouth. That's why you can see with certain people, look, it's, but I don't like them. Like mm. where does it come from? It comes mm. from that. Where you like, mm. I just saw them once. I saw them twice. I've never met them before. But something doesn't gel with me. So that's what we mean by the. But from your aura then, we then say that there are energy points within you. You know, you can look at the energy points as energy centers. So there are centers within you that stack up, that make you who you are as a human being. So from the bottom of your feet all the way up until the top of your head, all of those seven then become your full being. And that needs to flow. And that's what is so important about we need to have flow within ourselves and we need to have flow with everybody around us. So that's why you can be as enlightened as you want. But if you're around other people that are pulling you down or not, like, unhumbling, like, unhumbling, like you don't work together very well, then it's also not going to work for you. So 
based on that, um, it's very important to know that these energy centers are within you. Therefore, when you hear Koko Dinewa talking about, I can give you yonki meat, but if you are not willing to heal, you're not going to. That's what she means. She doesn't mean you are being difficult. You are, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing. No. What you mean by that is that within you, you have not aligned. And therefore, mm. whatever you're using to enhance, to help you, to assist you, because you do need assistance. But mm. if within you, you are not realizing the power that you are and what you actually have, and actually the things that you must heal and you must deal with, then anything else doesn't really help. So I'll start with um, the, from the bottom all the way up, because that's how we should be doing it. Like, I know we all live in a microwave society. You're like, okay, quickly, how can I line? By the weekend, will I be fine? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You know, it's a constant state of getting back to yourself. It's a constant state yeah. of balance. It's, and that's why when you start studying further into Kemet and understanding the principle of who we are, which is Umaat, you understand when you rise in the morning, you recite to Umaat. When you sleep in the night, you recite to Umaat. You are held, you are always held accountable. And that is also the work that you do with it, balancing your chakras. But we'll start basic. We'll start with the, okay. And then also, uh, I, as we're going up and I'm explaining, the first three chakras are masculine energy. So that's the masculine energy tells us what do we physically need? Like what does our body need? And that's what we'll go through. And then our heart basically connects us into your bottom and the top. And then the upper um, chakra centers then become your feminine energy. So what does your spirit need? And when you balance those out, that is when you find balance. And Nelly, like you said, Kuti, we make them practical. Isn't it interesting? Like I say, the intellect of our ancestors is amazing and incredible, you know, as we have been presumed to be primitive and not knowing. But when you look at how things are designed, and that's why I always say, look, look into our indigenous knowledge systems because there's divine intelligence there. Because if you look at the bottom half, the, the, because we look from bottom to to halfway and then we get into the heart chakra right from from the to, to the root sacral and then up to the heart throat and then crown chakra right uh, isn't it interesting that the masculine which is the bottom also is about rooting which is what your your paternal side of the family does isn't that interesting and when you look at the upper it's the mother energy and it's also where you know, like our boobs are, where we nurture, where we, you know, uh, where we, we, we find comfort and where we find home, right? Mm. Umzi is about the physical, which is the physical structure. And umzi is made because there's, there's, there's the masculine. And ikaya is made because there's the feminine. Because we, there can be a structure, but without which, meaning there could be the other three, but that's why they cannot... If, even with the other three in balance, if you don't work with the rest of the four, it means still things are not going to happen. You don't work with the rest of the three because the rest of the three opens up the four, you know, the last chakra, which is the crown chakra. So isn't it so interesting? Because I'm listening to you and so I'm going to be listening from the African perspective perspective so that I can say to people who say, I don't want anything with my dad. But you've been told by several healers, you need that ritual, right? Because, and, and you're like, because we, we, because of course, daddy hit us or daddy never showed up or daddy never paid in Taulo. But people don't understand. But by healing daddy, you are actually readdressing, you know, pathologies and, and generational curses that existed before your own arrival. So you are called to heal because by doing the healing work, by being the healer, by being the sangoma, you are healing and breaking a generational curse for your children and for your great-grandchildren. There's a statement that says, we do not only heal for ourselves, we heal for our children, we heal for our mothers and fathers, but we also heal for those who are coming after us. So as we are speaking, I was, I was asking, somebody's asking, what is in Belego? So 
to Khubikhiwa. And Khubikhiwa is not about an announcement, but it's a grounding ritual that gets done to help somebody be grounded and rooted in their ancestral lineage. And I think for me, and I like that you are actually bringing it back, uh, Gogo, to in that way, because that's how we should look at it. You know, do not remove yourself and think, is in Ziwa like his uncle? No, these are routes of passages. These are things that we were doing as a village that were normal. But because now we've got a generation or two generations that have skipped that, now we've got this vacuum of like, what do we do with that? But these were things that were done. Ubupuma, uh, after giving birth, there were certain things that were happening. There was rites of passages to get you into puberty. Um, once you are going into uh, being a young uh, woman, when you get married, there were actual rites of passages. And all of these rites of passages, as we'll talk further in other lives, are actually linked to your energy centers and how they also help and assist you with that. You know, So it's very vital that this is something outside of yourself. It's very important that you realize that I must see you go. You know, this yeah, was brilliant. Let's life. speak about the masculine. Yeah. I like it because yes. that's also where all things begin, right? Yes. You so know, it's kind of like going back home, yeah. Yes. So we will begin back home on the ground. So this is your mm. root chakra. This is the first chakra. It's on your tailbone. So it's right at the base of your spine. So Maushal, when you sit down, you right at the base of your spine, that is um, your root chakra. And basically it's all about grounding because it's all about being close to the earth. And that's why um, being on um, just on the grass is so like it, in, like it um, activates that. So basically mm. the root chakra is red in color. So, so I'll go through the colors also. So it's red in color and it's also is part of the earth element. So we have the four elements and the root chakra speaks to earth because it's about grounding. And it also, in your physical body, it will touch on your adrenals. Why your adrenals? Because that's what will release flight or fright in you, you know? So that's why you need to be grounded. And our root chakra speaks about survival. It speaks about safety. It speaks about our being. And it speaks about family. So therefore, your lineage is Mongosako, your name um, you know, it's very important about where you come from and understanding also your dynamics at home because it's all not all rosy. Or woody. I have a mother and a father, actually everything was fine, but you need to understand the dynamics of Gutupumagupi. So that's what um, it touches on. And in terms of the life lesson that um, the root chakra is teaching us, it's teaching us to feel safe and grounded. We need to know who we are. So we need to be grounded. So that singer pepezeli, you know, you know, you need something that anchors you down. And in that, you need to be able to address your family issues. You need to address your tribal issues because yes, there's a family of Ismong, but then we also have an issue of maybe Jenga Mazulu. There's certain things that we need to do of like like of like of certain things. So you also need to understand those dynamics within aligning yourself with the root chakra so that's before you even go to tribe you've got clan right because yes, so yes. because you've got your family that is part of a clan and then after your clan then it's your tribe so for for uh, and that's quite common uh, uh, even this, this zulu there's different clans and um, must read mm -hmm. so for example you know and then but in close up to the you know when that is to go sako uban and in 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 the babedi tribe as well because it's one big tribe we've got batokwa bapulani eh ba eh balobedu and then we've got the babedi so every every nation or every tribe has a clan so that's why even when your father eh uh, doesn't want to do your 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 lentuzan your belego or your 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 rooting i think let's call it that your rooting ceremony mm -hmm. To root you on the ground, then they will say, get somebody who shares the same clan name as you. In Kosa, they will say that because you might it might be difficult because the same name is created around the uniqueness of that family, but the clan connects you to a bigger community than just your nuclear family. So they'll say, find somebody next to go. It's, it, it, even in Zumba, so only share his tagas nine can go and do it even when mm -hmm. your dad is not is not around. And in the Sutu people, it's your totem. That 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 identifies your clan. So Bakwena, 
uh, ba piring ba tsweni. So, you know, I'm saying nuko ba peding ba tawung. So even if you don't have your dad around, but ipu mutawung and mutawung can do something for you, right? So that's, 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 that's what I wanted to say to people. And now I understand why abo koko, they always sit on the ground. Remember, abo koko mm -hmm. kai, they sit on the floor because it's about grounding and earthing. And when your umbilical falls off, they'll always say, Which ink abayako iwelegu, meaning where did they bury it? Because some of us, our root chakras are not rooted because we don't know what happened to Anka. Because leyong abayako, meaning that that umbilical, the little stump that, that remains after you are born, gets given and connects to the ground in a specific way according to your clan. I know and what they do. Uh, to make sure that the child so certain some of us are of ill health in a multiple way because something as basic as a ritual missed during your birthing or or your your coming of of age was not met so and that's why a lot of people also end up tossering in lc because some of them don't toss her really to be practicing sangomas they toss her to heal the discourses of the missed rite of passages and rituals mm -hmm. that were supposed to be performed for them. So they're healing a whole lineage, you know, of the family uh, by just going through a process of initiation, not to go heal the world, but they're healing themselves and their family. And that's why they don't practice. You are not called to heal. Mm -hmm. You are called to actually align your family and ancestral lineage. Mm -hmm. So I'm like I'm saying, you speak them, then Gabon, I mean, my yeah. job is to contextualize it so that then people can see which way does it fit in, in, in the different aspects of our lives as Africans. So it doesn't sound so Western. Because I saw another a tribe member saying, Guti Amara, what's chakra in Isizu? What would you say? It? We know it's energy centers and it's umoya. What would we call it in a scene? I think, like, I think in Dabayomoya is where I would, yeah, I've never thought about um yeah i would really think that like moya wako and mm. there's layers to it you know yeah because... and i yeah i say to people guti we are spirit beings meaning moya having a human experience yeah. so ama chakras are energy centers just making sure guti, they are in alignment with the body because when like but or whatever mm -hmm. if that's not well then what we then get to experience is diseases right so you can also find out people who are experiencing uh you know healers who go through an awakening it starts at the root right right like yes. yeah no it's not no it's not that umbilin is the rising of the kundalini it's the rising energy. So of the energy yes it's the rising no. of the energy that happens a lot with healers but now yeah. i also understand why people who are called to become healers they suffer from lower back pain because it's about you need to return to your roots because there's no way you can be isangoma ungafuna masiko because it forces you. Do you see that why other people are only called to go back and return back to the root chakra? Because a lot of things are not happening. There's no prosperity. There's no manifestation of marriages, of children. There is no wellness in the family because the root is broken. And I think so, also the way we kulmanga kona in terms of actually doing the ceremonies i think we have we are living in a time now where we feel that we lost we feel it's okay well whatever what do i then do but the way that we were so we looked after each other so you go back to your clan name you find yeah. somebody there's always a way for you to be able to go yeah. back and do those rituals and ground yourself like like sagi you know all of those small things that we have just kind of left and we're like okay now we're here you have to do that you have to do the work and that's also another thing about these energy centers they will irritate you they will make you uncomfortable until you actually fix it you know until yeah. you actually work on that part um so i'll go into just the to remind next... tribe members before you go to the next one we are not taking dreams we're not talking about rituals to be performed. When we make examples, we contextualize in chakras within the African context. So just make sure that the questions that get asked in the comments are specifically around your chakras. But so does it mean that it has to be around the energy centers? Um, so where you can go to the second chakra. 
Okay, the second ch chakra is the sacral chakra, which is orange in color, which is the water element. And this is your sexual organs. So this is your womb. And this is so basically just um, two fingers below your navel. That's where your, um, your sacral um, energy points will sit. And this is basically your sexuality, your creativity. I know a lot of people place a lot of um, emphasis about the sexuality. But yes, but it's also your creativity. It's also what are you birthing? And it's not mm. just about just for women. It's also for men because it's like it's your dreams. It's your ideas. And it's also about how you interact with other people. So this is the part of us. Don't sell yourself short. You know, mm. that's the part. once that happens, you are going to feel that that and that's like the like the life lesson of this energy point is that. Do not sell yourself short. And also remember that relationships are spiritual messengers, you know? So we must always remember that the people that we attract into our lives, the people that we let into that energy point, we attract ourselves relationships that actually help us to know ourselves, you know? So it's very important that when we are working on that um, area, we remember that it's about your sexuality which is a mirror to you and yeah. attracting. It's also the waters of life. And that's where the element is waters because it's the mm. waters of life. And that's mm. when you'll find Ubuti A. Abanda Badal, when you also find Ubuti, if you are gifted, you'll have issues there because that's where Abanda Badala sits and creates in you. Because when you are birthing, healing and you are birthing um like a new way of expression because also expression you know so that's where it will come but you see also i'm a miscontextualizer yes <laughs> because we also have a huge a community of tribe members who are izangoma to say those who also have what we call espiritual dao that's associated to umanzi amanzi they would have a lot of problems with their womb if they're women like la like, because mm -hmm. That, that's actually also where where the womb the whole womb area is around because that's the water element so if if you are not in honor of that ancestral spirit then it messes up with 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 that chakra yes isn't it Definitely interesting agree. it's so interesting Amara, Amara, and yes, i love we, how we, we're we, breaking it down because we're saying we're all saying the same thing here don't ever exclude yourself from this great wisdom and think mm. out of yourself you're walking and living it you know it's such a beautiful thing <laughs> so i will go into oh, are you okay god <laughs> it's nate <laughs> <laughs> the third eye but it's shut open <laughs> hey tell <laughs> one and then it's a little hey now i love you I got cool. Sing bona ngali. Sing bona kuti kwenza hala behind your curtains. So the third uh, point that we'll go to is your solar plexus, and that is uh, yellow in color, and it's the fire element. So that's on your your like your tam like your stomach basically, and that speaks to your self esteem and your power, and. Mm what you'll see with the solar plexus is your confidence because it's the fire element it's about you shining it's about you being able to you know light up you know um like light up a room light up your life and with that it also i call it um the god feeling because i i think that there's two brains we have two brains we've got the gut and we've got the actual brain I think the brain is the second brain. The first brain is actually your gut feeling, which I call the God feeling. And that's when you get something. You just, like, something just comes to you and you're like, oh, mm -mm, this doesn't feel right. And that is by your solar plexus. And that mm. is basically also about your personal ambitions. It's your personal power. And the life lesson is about living your purpose. Your solar mm. plexus is really about you living out your purpose and since we are still also on the masculine um energies that's also that force and drive that you'll have to be able to and be ambitious and push on and work and all of that will all come from there so that's why you find when or there's a misalignment there you can't do anything you just 
crawl up because your whole power of how you stand up and how you are comes from the that's where we, like you are housed and you know so i'm bringing it again into context now i'm also realizing why a lot of people have gut problems because they're running away from their soul purpose right because to talk to somebody who says i've changed my diet i am eating an alkaline based diet meaning it's less acidic and the body the the system can easily digest it but still you've got stomach problems you know when somebody i mean when you look at heartburn for example it starts in the gut right and it rises up all the way to here where it feels like you are actually not living your truth so the gut is the first signal of like you're not living in in your truth right because that's in your gut you're not living in your truth and your truth is it begins with understanding your purpose but how do you understand who you are and wh- what you meant to be if you are not rooted Exactly. because a lot of people are in and out of jobs or can't find jobs or can't settle down can be you know settle down they can't even have lasting relationships because of the root right mm-hmm. because part of your soul purpose is also connected to the relationships that you are going to be attracting in your life so you're not mm-hmm. understanding your soul purpose because soul purpose is about relating and relational so I'm just connecting the dots for people here you know so that people can see that and I always say to the tribe members we are spiritual beings therefore everything in our lives is interconnected and that's why it's, it's so complex that's why we can't say to you ah uh-uh, you are going to fix the root chakra everything is going to happen if you've been sexually violated it's going to affect your sacral chakra it's going to affect that so and then because you had trauma and it was hurting and there was you know sadness shame which was carried into your heart so as much as you do in belego go and and heal the heart as well because that's what i tell even mm-hmm. abokoko and everybody i'm like when you have experienced trauma because of your you had to awaken to the healer that you are called to be you still have to go and see a psychologist or a therapist to help you heal because they've left an imprint in your heart so you still need to go talk about it you know you still need to go process the 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 heartache or the heartbreak you still need to process those things because if you are not then you're still not in alignment it's because it's work it's working and i like that you say we're working our way up and sometimes when we are half there we realize but okay let's work back down again you know uh, because we've worked this but there's still something missing yes and that's the thing is that you always really be gentle with yourself be kind with yourself and know that we all working in progress you know so you are working your way up and it's very important um before i actually get to the to the heart chakra to 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 actually say that let us not rush to be opening up the crown in the third eye and be starting on the top because that's how you become paranoid because if you have opened up your third eye and your crown and you're not grounded in your roots that's how you actually start uh, getting paranoid you start seeing hallucinations and that's when you get this narrative of what hi usuke waba gifted kakhulu and wahlanya no it's not it's not because the gift is too much it's just because you did it too fast and you are not grounded you need to be grounded so that you can actually be able to process your healing and process your gifts and that's so important and we overlook it so many times because in this time that we in everybody it's trendy to just talk about the third eye and you know we could do a whole live just talking about that but it would not be doing justice to our progression as a people and you know as individuals in not actually talking about the most important thing spend time on your root chakra spend time and, and that's why you have healers who work from the place of you that's why we not i don't want to say healers as if i'm not also one who gets immense in their ego that when we are not rooted and not clear of of our purpose which is is our what you spoke about our our sacral chakra when we have and we are unclear about why am i called to be a healer right the minute your that i opens because people might think it's hard to open it it's open already you know it's mm-hmm. activated but when we get the opportunity of the we misuse it right because we we see us so in our seeing instead of 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 seeing for the for the benefit of the whole or the collective we start to use it to our own that's why we say ufana lo twase manje mawa twasu zofa you know because you are seeing guti and i also say to people well if you are not in your purpose you're going to die not a physical death 
but life will be meaningless. People feel discontent. I'm not satisfied. I've got a salary that pays me six figures. It's because you're not in your purpose. Right? And so yeah. it, you, you're not living in your purpose. So I'm seeing how actually the step to step, because even people who ask which chakra is easier to work with, why can't you say, what do I need to do to work through my chakras, not which one is easier, because again, you are disconnecting, because one might be easier, but the other one blocked, you are not going to be in synergy and in harmony. And there is no easy path, and there is no shortcut. And I mean, if you look at even with the solar plexus, that is where all of your um, hormones are excreted, so cortisol, balancing out your hormones as a woman, as a man, there's so much that it houses there that it's so important. That's why people have gut issues and the gut issues then become anxiety. They become panic attacks. They a whole host of things, but we'll go into that um, in an, like in another lesson. So Yeah, but that's the, why we say healers who are gifted. I always yes. say Uvalo is a gift awaiting to happen. Now I'm actually saying Uvalo is a gift needing to be expressed and experienced. Did you hear yes. that? So yes. when you have, because your solar is where your, mm -hmm. your, uh, your, your, your purpose is. So when Unovalo, it's because it's saying, this is your gift waiting to be expressed and experienced. So you will have that until, and Pella, being in purpose is not like, I know my purpose is to be a spiritual teacher. It's work, it's continuous work. Healing is it's work all the time. It's a journey. Once you've arrived, you understand that actually a new destiny, you know, a new journey has begun. You arrive at this point, then you have to, you know, go through. I say to people, arrival is when you depart from this earth, when the yes. physical detaches from the spiritual. It means what you have come to serve, your incarnation purpose has been served. That is complete balance, the grave. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll go into the fourth uh, chakra, which is basically the heart chakra, which is green in color, which is the air element. And it's, uh, which is in your heart area, so your chest area. So just about your, about your breast and all of that. And this talks about our love and our compassion and our tenderness. And the life lesson for that is basically how do you act in love and how do you act in compassion? And understanding that our most powerful energy that we have is love. Powerful, not the easiest. And that's what it teaches us to always be able to lead in love to lead in tenderness and compassion. And this also mediates, basically your heart chakra mediates your body and your spirit because it's that balance between the two. Another way that I also look at the heart chakra is that it balances your past and your future. The bottom, mm. which is your masculine energy, is more of your past that you need to delve deep into. When you're working your root and you're working your sacral and your solar plexus, there's some past issues there that you need to get to the bottom of. And in your heart is where you stay present. And then once you go into the top, that's your future. That that's becomes the things is not born by the flesh, you know. That's also when you start leading in faith. So it's also about having that balance of when you feel you can't stay in the past too long, you know. You have to be able to rise and be able to be in the present. And that's what the heart chakra reminds us of and that's what you also spoke about in terms of letting go of grudges you can't hold a grudge and want to ascend and want to be in your spirit you know it pulls you down you know that's so, about in case you had target. have we had those you know yes. statements that that mm -hmm. you know actually the the heart it can create a witchcraft because mm -hmm. everything starts there so if you're harboring hate and unforgiveness um, it means that that which you are oozing out, it's 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 kill, it's destroy, it's destruction. Yes, and I love that you actually speak about that because it goes into the next um, uh, chakra, which is your throat chakra, which is the fifth one, which is light blue in color and it's also the air element, and it's right here, and it basically governs the thyroid. Now we start getting into the power. Now we're getting into the power of. When I say manipulation, uh, it's not really manipulation, but let's just say now you get into the power to move things around. You know, you can, your heart and your intentions and your will can change and manipulate the situations. And then you then speak it out in your tongue. So now you're starting to get into the power, swords, your weapons, your heart 
and your tongue become very important because that is where you're able to move things outside of your energy field in, in how you're feeling. And basically your throat chakra is just teaching you about communication and expressing yourself truthfully. So being able to, whatever your heart feels, to be able to take it out. And also when we say, when we start talking about the throat chakra, people feeling at it, because I, if I, I must express my throat chakra, no. Remember, you're still leading with your heart. So you're still leading with love and compassion, but you need to express it, you know? And that's when discernment also comes in. But not destroy and, you know, make someone, break someone down, you know? Be able to still lead with that. And the balance... Be impeccable the with your words. Yes, that's also part of what Miguel speaks about. In the, everybody should get that book and read it. It's really amazing. It's really amazing. It's, and it's simple, but each thing that you read touches so deeply, but we'll discuss it at another time. Yeah, you can so, also download it on YouTube because I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I listened to it, I think, earlier this year, and I'm listening to it again. Like every time I drive to work, I, I listen to it again. Even if me, I'm channeling Ukoko no Laga, it's like, how do I still express Ulagalga Koko without destroying the person who needs to hear a message from Ukoko? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So that's also the life lesson of our throat chakra is basically the balance between the head and the heart and being able to speak your truth with kindness, with compassion, with love. We then go into the favorite. Yes, no one can be The third eye. <laughs> Everyone's waiting for yay. Now, the life has begun. The life has begun now. <laughs> we are by the third eye, which is basically right in the middle of your brow. It's basically Yeah, so basically it speaks to your penile gland. And basically what, um, it's purple in color, it's light or air element. So light basically because it's, um, yeah, you're starting to get to the higher points now where you can't really associate an element like that direct to it. Um, so now we, it speaks to your intuition and it speaks to having clarity. And the life lesson of the third eye is basically for us to be able to see past the physical. And seeing past the physical means having faith also. Because now it's seeing things that are not yet um, in, the, in the physical, you know, in the physical sense. It's things that are, you know, not yet seen. So it's about trusting that. It's about using your insights and your intuition. Um, I think my battery is dying. So, okay, you can dissect the third eye while I just quickly get my charger. Yeah. So I think as, as you could, you know, we could clearly see from the comments from the, the, um, the book is called The Four Agreements uh, by Miguel. I, is it Rages, if I'm not mistaken? If somebody knows about the book, please just write it in the comment section. Um, so, when we always say to people, uh, spermisne, for instance, to open the penile gland because we're opening the third eye and you, that's why you also see a lot of healers do it because when you sneeze as well, you decongest. Like when I'm near Timula, not because I've got flu, it's because I'm also, you know, mucus can also block the third eye. But when we're not going to get to it today, but next week we're going to get into um, how do you unblock and um, to how do you unblock each chakra to get to balancing all your chakras so that your crown chakra can then open up. So with the with the with the third eye as well, I, I I feel like for us to be clairvoyant or for us to see and connect to the messages of you know for me it's, yeah thank you the book is the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I'm I'm sure we're pronouncing it South African. It's pronounced differently. <laughs> see. <laughs> yeah. Sing your bone. You see, I tell the favorite part of the life is now. Yes. Yeah. No, I was I was saying to people, you know, even if <laughs> we want to contextualize the third eye, because we do have people who are see us. That's why some people will say, you know, my gift, my my curse, because they see so much, but because they're not rooted. 
right? And they're not in alignment with their purpose. So they don't know what to do with the messages that they're receiving. They get overwhelmed by the messages that they're receiving or they misuse the messages or they misinterpret the, the messages because there's no way if you're root, if you're not grounded, if your heart is not light and your heart is forgiving and your heart is flowing, can you then be able to relate the messages <clears throat> so that the messages that you are being shown uh, <clears throat> can then be for the benefit of the whole? <clears throat> I was actually thinking when I looked at the heart chakra, I was like, that feels like my art, eh? That feels yes. like it's a, it's, a, it's a chakra that, because that the heart is everything. Love heals. Love is everything. I mean, even when you look at religious books like the Bible that says that you can have faith that can move mountains and you can have this and this, but without love, you are nothing. Yes, and having like that balance of also your masculine and your feminine energy, because that's what the heart is doing. It's always bringing you back into balance. It's always um, saying to you, you a little bit off somehow and that's yeah. where you can find it by stopping and that's why they say stillness is also very important because when you just stood when you're feeling like you can't anymore you're all over the place just sitting ground on the ground holding yourself and just breathe you're able to come back and you're able to try and find some sort of balance and equilibrium and that's so why for that women who were you know during the full moon our emotions are heightened yes Right, our emotions are like... yes. <laughs> yeah. Because they also so... say that during the full moon, it's a good time to also be releasing and 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 inviting things. So it it makes sense, you know, because if things are present with you, so your pain becomes very present with you. That's like, <laughs> you know, and some people it's the opposite. Like today for me, for the first time, you know, with the full, my energies are up, and I'm like. But it because of that, my heart is lighter. So you know the the the, the pain experienced at this stage in my life. There's a there's a lot of peace. I was actually saying to a lot of people, I'm feeling at peace, and it's something that I haven't felt in a while. So therefore, with with the with the heightened emotion, it's more of a emotion of of peace than of turbulence and 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 being uh, uh, overwhelmed by by emotions. And also, we must think that we work in cycles, but we'll touch properly um, on the whole moon stuff. But we work in cycles. So this cycle that we're closing off with this lunar eclipse, we actually started it in December. Um, and we also, this is like the three or four of these lunar um, and like eclipses that we're finding in Sagittarius being the actual sign. So you are probably getting to a point where you are closing, you've closed off everything that you've been dealing with for the intensely for probably the last six to eight months that was very intense it's now been closed off right now and that's why releasing and letting go becomes a little bit easier and you're settling into a new beginning and it's yeah it's very interesting but we'll have a live about that and we'll just break it down but yeah so um, i was saying when you went to go get the charger probably the next week we'll have a following about how to you know unblock your chakras the things that block it and how what is it you need to do and then the next time we will speak about the full moon. So we can't yes. touch on everything here. Yeah, um, I actually, I, I could also feel, because I'm not, I'm, I don't have any back support. So I've been sitting on a chair because the other one with back support, Usi Abonga decided to be a mechanic and why unscrew our wines are in it, you know? So so we're going to get to the to the, to, yeah, so to the, the last one. Yes, yeah, so now we're at the last one and this is the crown. This is Kakai. So if you if everybody knows um, with little babies that this is the part that you can actually see going as they breathe, going in and out, and as you get your fonotel in English is called the fonotel. Yeah, and I was you should mention in English it's called. And Ukata is the fonotel, which I found very interesting. I was watching um, a documentary. Um, ancient um, Catholic people, what they did, all of the people that were priests and that were following all the men would shave this part of their head and have it exposed and they'd have hair all the way around. And then so that they'd be able to quickly connect or be able to hear messages from God. And I thought that was so interesting. This was like in early Europeans in the 1800s or 1600s, something like that. So basically when we talk about the, cra um, the crown chakra, it's white or golden color. And the elements is ether. Ether means everything all in one, you know, it's, it encompasses everything. There's no one um, element to it because it's it's everything. 
and it basically is your it's what connects you to the higher purpose so this is what connects you to the higher creator to the higher connector it's like it's your sense of oneness to all that is creation you know and this is what makes us also feel that we have Yay. and it also is how we have our spiritual connection to god um and to everything that's bigger than us physically you know in what we can actually understand and it's about holding on to the truth that all dark nights will come with illuminating a new path for you you know it's that faith also because now we start moving from the third eye to the crown it really speaks about your faith center it really speaks about letting go surrender not really letting go it's about surrender you know and i think that's what we sometimes struggle with because we're still trying to hold everything together make it make sense and this is the part where it says you have to just surrender to a higher being to a higher power but it's also interesting with mezala so it it used to be about when a child was 3 months they would take them to isangoma right and then but you had to niso right so many they get protected and they would because when sisebenza bantwana it's at the root and at the crown and i always say that when they do it here is to protect you so when you are in flow and like you in higher power that you don't absorb unnecessary energies so people i always say people who have a problem with or have a headaches is because they are you know they are stuck in perfection because the per- physical perfection of this is how it should be it's the Uh, this way or no way you know my way or highway but it's also people who are, res- are refusing to be in flow or in surrender of what lozi is asking them to be or showing up because then you umdana be baqinsa la ukuthi angahambi adonsa or arogela imimoya right because when this is open it means but you cannot be uh, in flow if there's no grounding because it means you're gonna you're gonna take on everything and you won't be able to filter what is yours and what is not yours So it it's actually making sense why it's got you even mega kabu muntu is from the bottom all the way up we start from the, the feet up. all the way up all the way up yes and that's also another point even the points moka but the points about kaba coin are the points of each of these energy centers that we were talking about because you are trying to protect that energy center because it energies everywhere so ubuthi ubambe anything can just cling on to you and that's what we don't want and that's why it's so important that we are in alignment with ourselves and we also get assistance from healers of certain things that we need to do to protect our energy field on a daily basis you know um it's not a one a one a, like a one thing that you just do you know it's a constant yeah thing. so we've we've been at this for an hour and a half the first 30 minutes we were, were not safe um oh, yeah. so I I'm going to give you an a moment to close but this is when I always encourage healers to always be students because the more we know the better we can do in our work as practitioners I feel like I've been inspired to look deeply into certain things before we even assume that oh no you you know well I don't work that way anyway even when people have a calling I don't just say like go uyo uyo twasa you know some people just need to get into limbelego and then you see right and you see what uh, what needs to happen and i also understand why the process when a process with gifted people they have to go through but amagobong abanye bathi slawu banye bariki sithuthu kasuthu or they call it ancestral foods and that when we you know at the institute we administer it ourselves but i understand actually as we do it we are taking one through the chakras the seven chakras because even when we when you do it you 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 when you're talking to the ancestors you're on your knees so you're on the ground you know it's put on the floor on the ground but also when you are consuming it and we always say ukuthi bangikhaqi khanda nesifuba but isn't that interesting ngicela boko bangikhaqi khanda nesifuba but isifuba which is connected to your throat and your heart chakra so you you know like i'm saying that as i'm sitting here my own aha moments are caring about actually i have a deeper understanding of why certain things are done the way that they are done so versus us saying but no 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 they are irrelevant or they are outdated let's ask how come and what is their significance even now you know i was also saying i also understand the significance when you are at church 
uh, you know, the spiritual churches, you ask to go wear a cape, it's pig, right? And it do, because you are protecting your energy field, because you're an absorber, you're a taker of energy as Mundo Moya, you absorb. So certain things is just to put a physical shield so that you are not absorbing everybody's energy, everybody's energy. Because the, the next thing, you, 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 you lose yourself, you've lost, you've lost your grounding, you know what I'm saying? And then he was speaking uh, earlier on about that's why some people, there's so much mental illness because of the crown as well. And I'll say, because if this is the, the highest form of all chakras, it's like the, if this is God awakened in you. So if, if you're not grounded and this opens up, because now you're seeing, you're hearing, you're sensing, you're feeling, right? So that's what also happens because it's asking you to, hey, Buyela Emma Susin, go back to basics. Go back to basics. So I always say to people there is clinical mental illness and the spiritual mental illness. Sometimes people are, are depressed because there's something deeply within you that's waiting to be born that you're suppressing. Sometimes it's a purpose unrealized that is and, and it's 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 manifesting itself and it's showing itself up, but you are not you you're not hearing, you are not seeing you're not connecting to it because you're not rooted no definitely definitely i definitely agree with that is that you know let us um i hope thank you so much uh for making this platform for us to be able to share today thank you everybody to join and actually stay with us for such a long time i know it's been very long thank you so much and i think and i hope that my intention with this live was just to get us realizing that the power lies within us and the power is black the power is not anything foreign to us and how much we are able this is truly for me my africa day to day that will also carry on to tomorrow it really is about connecting all of these things who we are you know and make sure that we understand our rituals and ourselves and the things that we do so much better and this is but the first step of many and i know that Dineo has been doing that with um like and sharing with all of us for such a long time so very thankful for this time and what i'd like to just leave everybody with be gentle with yourself um don't overwhelm yourself in terms of wanting to know everything but do engage with the knowledge with the reading you can send me a dm on the ecamdi's page also my personal page hippie with the porsche anything that you want to talk about i'm very like i'm very open and you can chat, but it's not be too much. Go Yeah, because you also need to create boundaries, you know. Because yes. part of balancing your chakras is is great. Exactly. Love, love, love says no course. lovingly. Yeah, because yeah, also sometimes you... people come online thinking that just by listening to a teaching, you can have a solution to a lifelong standing problem. We come on live to educate to enlighten and inspire so you can go on the journey of doing the work that you need to do certain things cannot uh you know just be be done over a stream people are asking for your personal page again let see what um it's hippie with a posh um i will i think it's linked somewhere um on or i think it's linked on the poster page yes the poster that, that i just posted now yes. I, 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 for today's life, it's your personal page that I tagged. I didn't, I forgot to tag Ikambi. But next week, we're going to do part two, but part two will be on Ikambi's page. Yes, okay. All right. Why he be with the post? <laughs> Just curiosity. <laughs> so, basically, um, my second name is Pearl Porsche. So, when I was growing up, everybody was, like used to call me Porsche. Then I realized I actually liked Donnelly Seal for what it stood for, because it's very deep for me hey it's been a lot of my journey and my healing to live my name um and then hippie is just how i live like i'm a chakra i'm all about uh, spirituality african spirituality very unconventional moon cycles crystals there's a whole lot of things that i love so so it's just that but you also thing. love nice things but i i, I, I nice kind of thought you like luxury yes. things. It's like, yes, I'm all spiritual luxury. in the mountain, but I also yes. am, the, I am the physical. <laughs> so the physical loves very poshy things. That's what I, very that's how I thought it. Because people sometimes <laughs> think when you are spiritual, you cannot enjoy, you know, the material world. It's, I think like, you know, uh, Matt says is that everything in balance. When I got my I Ching reading yesterday, I was told that I am born for 
to be wealthy in everything, you know, money, health. And she said to me, with your, with what you have come to do and your life purpose, you are actually supposed to be everything, but not in access. So even if you love nice things, but not in access, if you love going to the mountain, you can't go to the mountain for 365 days. You have to come down. So I was really grateful to hear that because it was like some people actually it's one way, but me, mine is like very crowny, open mm -hmm. and flowy, and you I, know? So. And I think that's also another thing we need to embrace. Like we really guys, we really, really need to embrace and I can't stress this enough. We really need to embrace each other in an abundance mindset. We really need to stop thinking ourselves small and if somebody else makes it, we need to stop wanting to drag them down on how dare they able to do this. Like I can be a healer and stay in my 10 million rand house. You know, let us not, why must we separate that? Let's stop yeah. that, you know, abundance and wealth. Like our forefathers had farms, had cows. They were never fighting over that. Now you don't need to fight someone because they bought themselves a new, uh, LV bag. We have to get out of this lack mindset. And it also starts with balancing out your chakras because once you are balanced within you, you are going to know that you deserve the best and anybody else is a reflection of you. So of course you want the best for them because you want the best for yourself. We have to work on that. Like we, yeah, I'm very passionate about that. No, I love <laughs> that. I actually bumped into a YouTube video about how Gucci made it. And I was like, if only we know the story about that brand. Um, and of course, every brand and every story has its shadow. So do we. Because we can be so focused at the shadows uh, when we become extremists, you know, that we don't appreciate the light. But that story for me was very empowering, really about how he started, you know, as no one, as nothing, and, and how he failed and got up and failed and got up and failed and got up. But his whole intention was to make sure people enjoy luxury because he said, you know, people loved finer things and they love quality. And I think for me, it was about the quality of the products that people were, were, were carrying. I think it's, it's just about us with everything that, that, you know, one of the laws of my art is to say everything in, 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 not in excess, because when it becomes too excessive, then it's not saving you, you know? So if you're going to have like 15 LV bags or, drink uh, uh, 50 times a day similar it's not gonna help you hmm. right it's not gonna help you right but it doesn't mean and i always say to people um for me i feel like when you're a spiritual healer and this is what one of my first few patients before i became coco dinero when i just came back from a pain and you know what she said to me she said mina if you both them cooking and at first i got offended by her because she was a black woman who was in management in corporate I would have not come. And I was like, you privilege. Uh, you know, because I had that reaction. But when I understood what she meant, she wasn't saying those who do or live in those spaces are not worthy. But she said, I needed a healer who reflects my aspirations. So for me, I came because you reflect my aspirations. I didn't have a $10 million or 10 million rent house, but we need to be able to say, I can say to you, I will make you win the lottery, but I haven't even won one, right? And I, or, or I live, I practice in a very shady place. So for me, it's always, always important that, and, and, and this is when I went into understanding certain things. And one of my clients, actually it was Boiti who said to me, there's no way, Coco, you work so hard for us to have us have the things we have. You are also deserving of those things. And yes, you can afford them. I was like, eh, eh, eh. hey, Malenga, I got <laughs> this is a lot, right? And, mm -hmm. and she said, you need to tell the universe you are deserving because you tell us how deserving when we are, we come to see you. Tell us that we have royalty, let's connect. So how come you cannot then be that which you are telling us? How can, and my art as, as my governing principle is that uh, you be in action and in word. So I cannot say to people, Guti, Yabona Mesenza, because there are two things that I do that I know for sure they will do the work that they're meant to do because I've seen them work. And, and I can't say to you, know this, but then I'm doing this way. You know, it's kind of like walking your talk type of thing. So we yeah. also, like you said about Inkomo and things like that, 
uh, you know there was actually would complement each other but it's very important because we need to understand which is zalo amakos na makos gas you know sis zalo yingos ne ntobugaz so opulence it's it's our divine right we 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 come from a legacy of opulence so we should never ever think we deserve anything less because that mindset as well it's something we need to heal i feel like that pathology of lack of undeservability of poor me and stuff and yes poverty is a reality but maybe something is amiss here because we've had so many interventions of developmental programs but nothing has changed we still far worse off than we have been you know so but now i affirm opulence as my divine right you know now i'm busy affirming my new this and that and i know because i am aware of self when i'm getting too much you know when i'm like ah that's you know i've got a, a range of sneakers but i'm like okay we're not doing anything for the next 3 months let's just retreat let's do that you know that's another thing i've learned i've also learned that some people are comfortable with the lives that they living because i used to feel guilty you know i mean we when when i'm like okay i'm driving this car but eh uban ban wa se kha o sahlala ku but i've worked for those things i have put time and energy and when you are throwing a rope they might not want to be pulled out because for them that's what their divine purpose is is to be there it's also a balancing you know it's balancing but we can speak about this it looks like there's a lot of topics that are coming out um let's let's live in love you know let's live in my art and 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 i think that's another thing once i understand it i will have conversations with because we've got great teachers who can come and and, and teach us about these gods and goddesses that we need to learn from so we can be the best versions of ourselves and we can live in the truth of our purposes thank you so much goko thank you so much for having me thank you everybody for this platform love and light lalin gash tell us